my question is, how might we teach business strategy to kids? And what started us on this path to answer this question started out with a really interesting offer. Would you be willing to try? The federal government had asked our team at the Rotman School of Management at the University of Toronto to explore if it was possible to teach innovation and entrepreneurship to 10 to 13 year olds. They believed that if we could teach these concepts at a much younger age, that we could inspire and create a new generation of innovators and entrepreneurs that can help our province achieve greater prosperity. And since we like tackling intriguing questions, we decided to try. But innovation to us wasn't just about invention, coming up with ideas. It was also about finding unmet needs that people had and being able to build a business around those needs. And so we used a design process for innovation and we borrowed a business strategy framework from our boss, Roger Martin, because we thought it was helpful to explain how to think about creating a business. And we had taught this design and strategy to adults, but we had never taught it to kids of this age. And so we asked ourselves, how might we teach business strategy to kids? And so when I think about teaching big and complex things like business strategy, I think about very accomplished and very intelligent professors teaching equally accomplished and professional um, uh, executives. But I realized it doesn't always have to be that way. I now believe that it's possible for any of us to teach anything big and complex. My talk today is about what I've learned in the process of creating this Big Ideas Camp and what to keep in mind if you're teaching anything big and complex. The first is teach through designed experiences. The second is struggle can be productive. And third, don't underestimate their abilities. So the first lesson I learned was teach through designed experiences. And when we first started brainstorming around how we would teach business strategy, a lot of people said, get them to pitch their idea or have them create a commercial around their business. And we didn't want to follow too closely of how students learn in the classroom because we thought it wasn't possible for them to just look at companies and understand how to be innovative. And so we believe that designed experiences would be really powerful for them to learn about business because they would be learned through the act of doing. It's kind of like ice skating. You can read all the articles and blogs you want to be prepared for what it's going to be like to go on the ice. You know what equipment to have. You can maybe even watch videos to imagine what it might be like. But as soon as you step onto that ice, it's entirely different. My guess is a lot of us didn't glide across that surface. We probably fell down a lot more than we care to admit, than we were standing up. And any notion of us jumping or doing any sort of fancy jump quickly vanished away. And it was really this idea about building through um, practice that we can build capability. And that was the same for designing this program for the kids. We wanted them to have first-hand experiences around creating a business so they could talk about it from a place of experience rather than just reciting a definition. And we wanted them to walk away with the creative confidence in their abilities not only to create ideas, but also to create businesses. And so we created two experiences. The first was a business strategy game, and that was based on a real 14-year-old entrepreneur named Carter Kostler. And he created this water bottle which allowed you to infuse your water with natural fruit flavors. And we created a number of stages in this game, and at each stage, these kids had to answer the questions that face organizations today. Who will be your customer? Where will you sell your product? How might you make your product? What do you need to be really great at in order to win? And these kids made these choices on their own, and they got the results at the end of the game. And the second thing that we created was an innovation challenge based on a real challenge today. And it allowed for the kids to apply what they learned in the business strategy game to their own ideas and creating their own businesses. And this innovation challenge also gave them confidence to create businesses. As you can imagine, sometimes it's hard to engage preteen boys. And that's why it's really important to design experiences. There's a group of boys that were working on a challenge around urban farming, so growing and producing food uh, within urban centers. And they had no idea what urban farming was. None of them had ever grown up on a farm. None of them had ever visited a farm. So they really knew nothing about this concept. But knowing that they're going to have ownership over their ideas and their businesses, they dove right in. 
they were able to find a need of these urban farmers, and they created this cool idea. It was a solar-powered flashlight that emitted a special kind of light that allowed herbs and vegetable plants to grow. And they created an even cooler business. And they were so proud of their idea. At the end, they said, this is so real. We're totally going to make this. <laughs> and at the end, they told everybody to make sure that they were to look out for their idea in the store. And so on one day, they were learning about business strategy. And the very next day, they were applying those lessons to creating an idea and connecting it to their business. They were being real business people. And for us, strategy is about making winning choices, and they were making them. For me, I think uh, experiences are powerful ways to teach that are different than just reading or writing alone. And I think experiences allow us to make concrete meaning out of big and abstract concepts. I also teach innovation to graduate business students, and it's really hard to explain what innovation is, and it's even harder for them to understand how to be innovative. It's not until they get their hands dirty and get that first-hand experience that they say, OK, now I get it. I now know what innovation means. The second lesson I've learned is struggle can be productive. The world is complex. It's not neat and tidy. Problems don't come neatly packaged. And unlike school, there is no single right answer. And there is no book where we can flip to the back of the page and quickly look up the solution. The world is complex for us as adults, and we didn't want to pretend that it wasn't for these kids. And dealing with complexity is hard. We as adults struggle a lot with this. Sometimes we succeed, and sometimes we fail. And I'm sure we've all been in that situation where it's been hard to figure out where do we even start, and even harder to imagine that there's a better answer out there. And so this idea about being able to deal with struggle productively was something that we wanted those kids to learn at a younger age. And so rather than taking complexity out of the strategy game, we intentionally designed failure into it. There were wrong answers, but it wasn't easy to tell. And so these groups of kids made very different choices from each other. At the end, some made a lot of money, and others made none at all. But after they figured out you know, their, their results, if they got first, fifth, or last place, a fascinating thing happened. They cared far more about why and how they got there. They kept asking us why choosing certain customers would be better and how that would connect to where they might sell their product. They were curious about why customers' values and beliefs could impact how and where they produce their product. In some of these cases, these groups failed. And that was OK with us, because they were able to learn about failure in a safe environment. And this game did also something else for these kids. It built resilience in the face of struggle that they encountered in the game. They were able to get immediate results from their uh, choices that they made, and then also understand why their choices did or didn't make sense. There is one particular group who didn't do well at all on the strategy game. They ended up choosing a customer where, for them, was really important about where the products that they were buying were made from. And for the water bottle, this group chose to produce it in China because it was cheaper. Well, it turned out the very next day when they were working on their innovation challenge and they were looking at their idea, they had this debate about where they were going to produce their product. Some of them were saying, we've got to produce it in China because we can make more of it at a cheaper price. And some of them said, maybe, just maybe our customers care where we make this product. Ultimately, because they were a Canadian company and that was really, really important to them, they decided to make that product here, even though it was going to cost way more money to do so. Feeling and experiencing the struggle, as painful as it can be in the moment, can be productive. It can build resilience and character. And I think struggle is important to teach, because it reminds us about the amount of hard work that we need to do and the dedication and perseverance we need to have in order to be great at those things that we're so passionate about. The third thing I learned was don't underestimate their abilities. This one seems obvious and straightforward, and it is. But it's really hard to remember when we're designing for someone else. I think for us, we often make snap judgments because we don't think that people can do the things we want them to do or to learn. 
But with that frame, it leads us to oversimplify. But how is that helpful to anyone? And so when it came to business, these kids knew a lot. They were able to talk to us about their experiences with brands in terms of the products that they bought, in terms of their in-store experiences and through social media. And when we started talking about what business was all about, they had really smart and cool things to say about complex issues like corporate social responsibility. And they were able to give us examples from their own lives of brands and companies that really supported the content that we were teaching. And so for us, when we think about their imagination, when it comes up to ideas, it's pretty easy to see that they can come up with some pretty creative ideas. But what we witnessed was we saw that these kids could come up with equally amazing businesses. Their fresh eyes and their imagination on challenges allowed them to see opportunities that, frankly, sometimes it's hard for businesses to see. There's a group of nine and 10-year-old girls, and they were working on this innovation challenge. It was around recycling. How might we increase recycling in the city? And they came up with a very cool idea and an even cooler business. And so here's what they did. They found out that people want to do the right thing when it comes to recycling, but they find it really hard to motivate themselves to do the right thing every single time. And so they created a line of t-shirts that had a fun and environmentally friendly motivating message to do the right thing. And they were going to make these in North America because they wanted to support the local economy. I can't say myself at the age of nine that I was thinking about the local economy, but these girls were. And they were going to sell these online. A portion of their profits would go to their business, but another portion of their profits would go to their local YWCA, which at the time didn't have money to pay for a recycling program. And they were inspired by a company called Ten Tree. For every item that they sold, they planted 10 trees. So for these groups of nine and 10-year-old girls, they wanted to not only create a successful business for themselves, they wanted to help out people to do the right thing and recycle, and they also wanted to support their local community. I think Adora Svitek, who's a 12-year-old prodigy from Washington State, said it best in her 2010 TED Talk on why the world needs childish thinking. She said, we kids love challenge, but when expectations are low of us, trust me, we'll sink to them. And I think this might be true for us as adults as well. We will meet the expectations that people set for us. But as teachers, our role is important. Our role is not just to teach the subject matter, but our role is also to aim high, to bring out the best of those who are teaching and to help them realize their potential. And so for the next time that you're faced with a situation where you need to teach something, no matter how big and complex it is. I hope that you can make use of some of the lessons that I've shared with you today. I think that great teachers can have a profound ripple effect on not only how people see themselves, but also in the choices and the decisions they make throughout their lives. Looking back, and whether she knew it or not, my dance teacher, who also happened to be my mother, taught me dance through elements of designed experiences. She certainly let me struggle, let me tell you, but she never once underestimated my abilities. And she taught me something incredibly hard. She taught me what it truly meant to be creative, to be imaginative, to be an artist. And I think together, our task is to help make those things that are big and complicated that what is seemingly unteachable, teachable. And I believe that the lessons that I've learned can help impact and inform how we teach kids business moving forward. From what I've witnessed and the stories I've shared with you today, I envision a future generation of innovators and entrepreneurs that can help create our future shared prosperity as we continue to nurture and shape their creative abilities in business. Imagine what that impact could be on all of us if we're able to do just that. Thank you.